Hello everyone, this is John, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at the feed to post add-on for WP RSS aggregator. So what does feed to post do? Feed to post is the add-on that will take RSS feeds from other websites and import them into your own website as posts or other custom post types of your choice. So let's take a look at how it works. As soon as I've got it installed, I will see nothing particularly different compared to when I just have the RSS aggregator core plugin installed. However, when I click the add new button, the interface will be quite a bit different than what you're used to if you've been using the core plugin on its own. Let's take a look at each part of this interface bit by bit and explain what the each part is useful for. As usual, we enter our feed name, which for the purposes of my example here, which will be Aliona Travels. We enter the feed source URL. So this will be alionatravels.com slash feed and an optional description. Okay, so you can also enter a limit, which will restrict the number of feed items imported. Say, if the feed on alionatravels.com contains 10 feed items, and here I set a limit of five, only five items will be imported. For now, I'm going to leave that blank, and we will therefore import all the feed items found in this URL. Now, you might have noticed that next to the URL input box, there is a small validate feed link. Usually, feeds will be okay. However, if you encounter any troublesome feeds, we suggest that you click this validate feed link and you will be taken to the W3 validator, which will give you a yes or no, basically, whether the RSS feed is valid or not. In this case, it's a valid RSS feed, so we're all good to proceed with it. So, from the feed source details, we have explained everything. It's very easy, just enter the URL, an optional description, and optionally, a limit for the feed items you want to import. Let's go on to the feed to post general meta box next. So the first thing you have to do here is to select the post type. By default, post will be selected, but you can also have a number of post types that you either created yourself or maybe a plugin created or maybe one of your themes has created. So that's your choice. You choose in which post type the imported feed items will be stored. In this case, I'll be leaving everything as it is. So imported feed items will go into posts. Next, we have the post status. This is very important. What are we stating here? We're stating what the initial post status for imported feeds will be. So you can set them as draft, as published, private, or pending review. These are the states that you might be accustomed to when creating posts, creating posts manually. So in this case, I'll just leave it as published. Many users like to use the draft option so that they can go in and do their own edits before publishing an imported item. So these two, published or draft, are the most popular options. Now on to post format. As you know, or you might not know, WordPress has a number of post formats. So your theme, if it's one of the latest themes, will probably cater for different post formats. If it does and you want to make use of them, it's really easy. All you need to do is to select the post format that the imported feed items from this feed source will be attached to. Now, with regards to post date, you can either select the original post date of that feed item, or you can use the feed import date. So how does this work? Let's say I'm importing from this blog, alionatravels.com. Now on this blog, I have posts that are published, say, every week, right? Now, therefore, every post will have a post date. 
when we import them, we can either choose to attach the post date, which was on the original blog, therefore on alionatravels.com, or the feed import date, which is the date when those feed items have been imported into our website through WP RSS aggregator. The most popular option is the original post date, of course, but for some reason, maybe some, some people sometimes need to use the feed import date and it's there for you to use. So next um, option is enable comments. Here you can tick this box to enable comments for imported posts from this source. If you untick that box, this means that the imported posts will not have the comment box beneath the post. So people cannot comment by, by default. Now, one of the most important features, and I feel one of the advantages of having feed to post is the ability to force full content. What does this mean? Some feeds have or provide only a partial, the partial content of every post. With this system, forceful content, we attempt through the plugin and through some third party services, we attempt to get the full content from the original post. So you won't only be having the excerpt found by default in the feed, but you'll be getting the full content originally appearing on the website where you're importing the content from. Let's go over to the allow embedded content. This is useful for instances when you want to embed content such as YouTube videos, Instagram embeds, or even maybe podcasts from SoundCloud. All these need to have this option enabled in order to work. So let's move on to the next meta box, which deals with taxonomies. Now, taxonomies consist of categories, tags, or other taxonomies, custom taxonomies, which you might have created through code or through a plugin or through a team. So here we have our post terms. These are created, these were found actually by the plugin in our system. So basically we had created these categories ourselves. So now we can say place feed items imported from this feed source into the entertainment category. You can also choose to auto create terms, which means that if you check this box, you can automatically create terms for the taxonomy selected above. Ergo, if this post imported will have say categories, nature and say Spain, those two categories will be assigned to the imported post as well, together with the one we selected here. For now, I'm just gonna keep our entertainment category selected, which means that all items imported will go into the entertainment category. I can also select multiple if I want. To select multiple, I just hit key press the, the control button on a PC or the command button on a Mac. Let's go forward and take a look at the author meta box. So here we can use either the author in the feed or one of the, the usernames which we already have created on our website. And you've got some other options, say, if the author is not a user on this site, you can use a fallback user or create a user for the author. Let's take a, a little example here and say, say the author of this post was a guy named David, and we don't have any David usernames in our website. So what the plugin will do is create a user for that author. So it will create a user named David under this option. If on the other hand, we use the fallback user option, it will use just the admin username. Since the fallback user is admin, you can have also a number of users and select any one of those. Next, we go to the images meta box. 
and here we have the option to save images locally. So if you check this box, all images found in the imported items or the imported posts will be downloaded to your server and therefore be included in your website. So when you view these posts on the front end, the, the, the images will be actually loaded from your site, not hot linked to the original size. That is if you select this checkbox. You can also enable featured images for your, if your theme supports featured images, this is something which I recommend you check. And you can also choose which featured image to use. You have a number of options here, for example, the first image in post content, the last image in post content, the media thumbnail, or the image contained in the enclosure tag. Also, you can choose, for obvious reasons, the minimum dimensions for the featured image, which means that we don't want that little smiley in the post, which measures, say, 4x4 four four pixels, to be your featured image, right? That's just an image which is not serving any real reason. You want real photos or illustrations to be used as your featured image. So I recommend at the very minimum to set or keep the dimensions of 80 by 80. You can choose any dimensions you want here. And move forward to the prepend to content box. This is very easy to understand. Before the post content, I mean the posts we are creating through the imported items, we can add some text or whatever you like. You have a basically a so let's go ahead editor box you can use. And you also have some placeholders which are interesting enough. You've got the same thing but for a pending post to content. And how might we, we, we use this? For example, you can do something like this. And we use a placeholder, say, post URL or feed name. Let's do something like this. So you can say this source first appeared on feed name, which will be Aliona Travis. This will be replaced on the front end. And here we go. You can just leave it like that. You can use other placeholders which we provided in there. Let's move forward to extraction rules. And in extraction rules, you can remove elements from the imported post. So let's say that the imported feed items for some reason are coming in with sharing buttons. And definitely we don't want the sharing buttons of another site being populated into our site. So what we do is do something like this. Say the sharing buttons are contained into a div, in a div called sharing buttons on the original website. So what you do is you define the class, in this case for the sharing buttons, and you click remove element. There can be the case where you want to remove an element but keep its contents. For example, you can have a link and you want to remove the link, therefore the a text surrounding a piece of text, a string of text, but you want to keep that string of text which is enclosed within the A text. So we remove the A element, but we keep the elements inside, the contents inside, which would be the text link. So we remove links, basically. So that's how it works. You can even have more than one extraction rules. If you want to delete the extraction rules, you just hit the bin button right here. And that's it, basically. If you've got the keyword filtering, add on install, you'll also see the keyword filtering interface right there. But we won't be describing that since it's a separate add-on. So I'm going to scroll up and I just wanted to show you that we also have the feed processing um, interface, which is retained from the core and also the feed preview meta box, which again is retained, retained from uh, core. And you've also got the fallback featured image. In cases where you don't have a featured image, you can set a featured image, which will be the fallback or the default featured image for all imported posts. 
And basically that's it for the feed to post plugin. So what I'm gonna do right now is to save my feed and as soon as I hit publish feed, that will import all the feed items from this feed source. And I'm gonna show you how that looks on the front end. The feed sources listing now shows the fact that we have imported 10 items here. Now, if I go to the post um, screen on the WordPress dashboard, I will see that again, all the feed items have been imported correctly and they've been placed in the correct category. Now on the front end, let's take a look what happened. And I've refreshed um, just a few seconds ago and we can see that all the posts and images have been imported correctly. These are all the posts and this is the featured image has been set here. And we've also got all the text and images and links working perfectly well. So that's how feed to post works. Now it's up to you to be creative and use it for your own purposes. Now, for those of you who are, who want to do some advanced stuff, I suggest that you take a look at the FAQ section because we've also got some really handy filters and other code snippets that you can use with in conjunction with the, with the plugin, right? So we can do things like, for example, let's say these are the feed to post um, FAQs. So for example, you can set default thumbnails per category by using this plugin, or you'd say want to trim the content displayed, show an excerpt rather than the full content. You can use this filter and we have got a lot of other things that are usually the result of feature requests from, from you and the other users. So if you have any other feature requests, I suggest you also go to the feature requests section or also you can contact us. I also remind you that on our website, we have some recommended themes. So these are themes which we've tested and we can say that work, they work really well with our add-ons, including the feed to post add-on. So these are just suggestions for you if you are looking for a new theme for your website. Okay, that's all from me today and I hope you enjoy the plugin. And if you have any questions or doubts before buying the plugin, I suggest you just head over to support and hit the contact link and let us know what it is you'd like more information about and we'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.